Next up, we have two animals that are quickly becoming the source of an ever-growing controversy, a candino and an albino. Top of the morning, friends and family. Today I bring you a special episode where we are attempting to use an accent not native to our own and bring you inside this facility behind me known as Freedom Breeder. In this facility is cultivated one of the most beautiful reptile species, Python regius. For those that are true connoisseurs of the Queen's English, you may find this offensive. However, I want you to know that you're not alone. If we are successful, we will bring you inside this facility and show you the extremely delicate balance between all Homo sapiens within. We will show you the whole range of existence from the animals produced, the bottom of the rung, the top rung, and all of the in-betweens. At the bottom of the spectrum, we bring you this Homo sapien here who is working on the production of rodents to feed the Python regius. This is truly a thankless endeavor. Probably the only joy this gentleman will experience in the entire year is knowing that somebody has paid attention to the fact that he actually works at this facility and plays a part in the role of producing Python Regius. The breeding of rodents can be extremely dirty, disgusting, and taxing on one's soul. The gentleman behind me here is the one we would consider to be next up on the hierarchy of the totem pole. His job is to assemble and create the racking systems in which the rodents are bred and the snakes are bred. It is his job that is responsible for streamlining the process and assuring that sanitary conditions are made for the animals in the production. Now as much as I'd love to spend more time documenting this gentleman's work, he's been known to be hostile and spending any extended amount of time in his presence is unwise, so we're going to join you on from here. Although still low on the totem pole, this gentleman's position is possibly the most important position in the entire facility. He is responsible for creating all of the tiny detailed parts that go into creating these racks of which the whole facility runs off of. He is a solo cog in a wheel of a machine that if he was to fall apart, the rest would crumble. The amount of white hair on his head is a telltale sign of the amount of stress that he endures on a daily basis. How he handles such stress is unbeknownst to myself. I can only imagine that he maintains a level of humor with which to combat the reality in which he is living. This next muscle-bound gentleman behind me is in charge of running I don't know what. So I've put him next to Mother Totem Bowl because every time I come and visit this facility, he's doing something completely different. One day he's breeding snakes, the next day he's manufacturing parts, one day he's sweeping the floor. He's mobile, ever-changing position. I believe he has the highest chance of survival in this facility for that reason. The cleanliness of this part of the facility has caught me completely off guard. I had no idea that such an environment existed within. I can only imagine it is brand new construction that has led to the beauty inside of this room. Clearly, the attention to detail that has been paid here is a sign of the everlasting life that this facility will live. It's been in the family for millennia, and I can't imagine how much further now it will continue. On second thought, the environment this new room creates is so pleasing I could see an individual wanting to spend their entire time here, which would eventually lead to the downfall of the company. Next in this room behind me are what I would consider to be the rock stars of this community, the Python Regius. They give absolutely zero about what the rest of the environment is doing so long as their environment is good. Proper temperatures, humidity levels, and getting fed on a regular basis is truly all they care about. Everybody else can f off. Let's have a look at some of these creatures. First up, we have the Clown Pied, which is a double recessive mutation, possibly one of the most beautiful genetic mutations for which this species is bred. The first thing most people notice is the stark contrast between the white and patterned parts of this animal and the striking, unique head stamp 
markings and patterns that come from the clown mutation. This here is easily my favorite animal in this entire facility. This next animal was imported directly from the species native habitat of West Africa. It is only through breeding which we will be able to determine if the traits this animal possesses will be inherited genetically by its offspring. Next up, we have two animals that are quickly becoming the source of an ever-growing controversy, a candino and an albino. The source of controversy is not so much at the animals themselves rather than the proper pronunciation of the word albino. Americans tend to call the albino albino, yet call the candino candino. Would not it also be a candino if it were an albino? Candino and albino? Candino and albino, not albino and candino? Would that not be the correct way to say it? If albino was albino, candino would be candino. It's an ever-growing controversy. Please leave a comment down below. Is it albino or albino? Which one is correct? And if so, why is candino only candino and never candino? This is going to be the last animal we show. The controversy over the previous animals has got me so worked up, I just don't think I can stay in this room any longer. But the morph of this snake is not nearly as important as the fact that any time you are showing up a group of animals on camera, one of them always, always insists on being in shed. Behind me you will find the individual responsible for communication with the outside world. Always constantly communicating, communicating, communicating all day long. Almost like a chicken whose head has been removed. You can never find him in the same spot once. In fact, it's quite rare that we found him in one location right now without moving for over 30 seconds. This man is responsible entirely for the communications with the outside world. Again, I cannot stress that enough. Without him, there would be absolutely no contact with the outside world. A rare moment indeed to catch these individuals outside of the facility in their eating environment. Taco trucks, California taco trucks are the this best is where we now. get the power. Another truly rare moment. One of the outsiders is being allowed to remove the product from the facility itself. Rarely does anyone at the facility allow someone from the outside to come and load their own products. The trust level is so low of outsiders, but clearly they're making an exception in this case. The only female that can actually be found within the facility working hard right here. One of life's mysteries, how does she manage to put up with an environment full of nothing but headstrong, bullheaded males? It's, un it's just beside me. I don't know how she's able to do it, but somehow, somehow she is. I am now sitting in the chair of the patriarch of the facility. He is not here, obviously. Were he here, there is no way I would be able to sit in this seat as he is the alpha of the company. It is my understanding that he is currently abroad, spreading his seed throughout the world so that future generations may accomplish that which he has accomplished. I hope this documentary was insightful. I hope that you learned everything you hoped to learn about the controversy between albino and albino, candino and candino. I would also like to reiterate the fact that this is not my real accent. I am actually an Englishman and I've been practicing my French accent. I hope that it came across well. Top of the morning, friends and family. Top of... Top of the morning, friends and family. Top of the morning, friends and family. Today, in this episode, we bring you a documentary of the facility behind me. In this facility, they cultivate Poithon Regius. <laughs> Python, Python Regius. <laughs> Only any wonder that this gentleman is not. <laughs> what they do best. <laughs> God damn. Taco trucks, California taco trucks 
Oh, the this best is where we get the power. God. <laughs> <laughs> the only female that actually can be found within the facility, right here, Julie Johnson. God, you're ruining my stuff. 